This is the fourth video of eight that I'm sharing here on YouTube for my full course Vue.js 3 Composition API with Pinia and Vite. In this video, we're going to be learning all about how to use lifecycle hooks with the Composition API, including mounted hooks, activated hooks, updated hooks, and how to use multiple hooks of the same type in a single component. You can find a link to the whole playlist down in the description, and you can grab the full course with my discount at dannys.link slash composition API. Lifecycle hooks allow us to execute code at different stages of our component's lifecycle. So we can execute code when our component is mounted, as in when it's loaded into the browser, or we can execute code when it's unmounted, as in unloaded from the browser. And let's just remind ourselves how we use lifecycle hooks in the options API. So I'm gonna scroll down to this script section again, and I'll just cut the closing comment and paste it at the top. And so in the options API, we would add hooks like this. So to add a mounted hook, for example, we would just add a mounted method to our default export like this. Then we could do stuff when component is loaded, or we could add a unmounted hook like this and do stuff when the component is unloaded from the browser. And let's just stick a couple of console logs in here. Console.log mounted and console.log unmounted and save that. And this will still work by the way. We can actually combine the composition API with the options API. You'll see if I reload the page, we can see mounted being logged out in the console. And if I leave the page, we can see unmounted being logged out because our home view has been removed from the browser. However, I wouldn't recommend using both the composition API and the options API at the same time. Number one, it makes our components really messy and inconsistent. And number two, it's difficult to communicate between the different script sections. For example, in our options API code, we can't access data properties which are in our composition API script tag. But anyway, because with the options API, we could only add one hook of each type. So one mounted hook and one unmounted hook. This meant that we often needed to bundle a lot of unrelated logic all together in these hooks. But in the composition API, we can add as many hooks as we like, as many mounted hooks as we like, and as many unmounted hooks as we like. And we can place these anywhere we want to within our script section. So let's just comment out this options API script section again. Uh, let's add all of the mounted hooks to this component. And I'll add these in order of execution. So the first one is the before mount hook, which will be fired just before the component is loaded to the browser. And to do this in the composition API, we just add a method called on before mount, and then we pass a method into this method. And we can stick all of our code here that we want to fire before the component is mounted. So I'll just log out on before mount, and then I'm gonna duplicate this. And next we have the on mounted hook, which we add like this. And then we have the on before unmount hook. So on before unmount. And by the way, I'm just doing a multiple selection here by holding down the Alt key, selecting the text, holding down the Alt key, and then selecting the other text. And finally, we have the unmounted hook. And for this, we add a method called on unmounted. And to use these hooks, we do need to import them from view. So I'm gonna do a multiple selection here, select all of these method names and copy them and jump up to our import, add a comma and just paste those in. And then I'm just gonna join this back together by pressing Command Shift and P to show the command palette. I think the shortcut is different on Windows and just firing the join lines command. And then I'll just add some commas between these. Uh, let's save that and see if it's working. I'll reload the page. And yeah, we can see on before mount being logged out and then on mounted being logged out. And if we jump to the about page, we can see on before on mount being logged out and on unmounted being logged out. One thing to note is that there are no created or before created hooks in the composition API. And that's because code that we put at the root level of our script tags will effectively be fired at this point. So all of this code in our script section is effectively being fired before the component is created.
let's see how we can add activated and deactivated hooks with the composition API. And um, we do this in the same way. I'll just duplicate this on mounted hook. And um, we just add a on activated hook. And we'll just log out on activated. And then for the deactivated hook, we just use the on deactivated hook. And again, we need to add these to our import. Oh, it looks like VS Code has automatically added these, but just add them here if it didn't. And I'll save that. Now these hooks will only be fired if our components are being kept alive. That means that the component keeps running in the background even when it's not being displayed on the page. And to do this, we need to wrap our router view component in keep alive tags. So we want to jump to app.view and then we want to wrap this router view in keep alive tags. And we can either use dash case like this, or we can use Pascal case. And I'll use Pascal case since that's what we're using everywhere in our app. And we just want to stick this router view inside these tags and save that. And actually we do this differently in view three because we see this warning here, router view can no longer be used directly inside transition or keep alive, use slot props instead. And it gives us a little example here of how to do that. So we can just copy this and paste it over here. And it should now keep all of the components which get loaded into this router view alive. And we should see our activated and deactivated hooks working. So I'll we'll save that and reload the app. And we can see on activated there. And if we leave this page, then we see the on deactivated hook being fired as well. Now, I don't want to keep the pages alive in this app, so I'm just going to undo everything we changed in app.view so that we just have our router view component on its own, and then I'll save that. We also have the updated hooks, which are fired whenever our template changes. So for example, whenever our counter changes. So let's add those hooks to this homeview.view component. And this is getting a bit messy now, so I'm going to remove all of these hooks and remove all the imports of these hooks. And we're going to add a on before update hook. And we'll just log out on before update. And this hook will be fired just before the template is updated. So if we click on this button and the counter changes, this will be fired just before the template is updated. And then we have the on updated hook, which will be fired at the point when the template is updated. And we'll just log out on update. And actually my bad, it's not on update, it's on updated. So I'll just fix that. And again, we need to import these. So we'll import on before update and on updated from view and save that. And if we reload, then you can see these hooks are not fired when the component is first loaded. But if I click this button and the counter increases and our template changes, then we can see these hooks being fired. First, the on before update hook, followed by the on updated hook. Before we move on, let's just demonstrate adding multiple hooks of the same type. Uh, I'm just going to remove these updated hooks. So I'll remove the imports and remove the actual hooks. So let's say we want to do some stuff related to our app title when the component is first loaded. And we also want to do some stuff related to our counter when the component is first loaded as well. So we can just add two on mounted hooks. So let's import on mounted from view. And then after our app title, we can add the on mounted hook. Uh, I'll just log out, do stuff related to app title. And then let's say we want to do some stuff related to the counter when the component is mounted, then we might want to add that down here. So we can just paste in another mounted hook and I'll just change the text in this log to do stuff related to counter and save that. 
So this way with the composition API, we can keep all of our hooks together with related code, especially if we use comments to separate out our different sections of code. So what I often do in view components is I add a block comment like this. I'll just add a comment for our imports and then move this up and indent that. And then I'll add another comment for our app title. And we'll put the app title const and the unmounted hook related to it underneath this comment. And then I'll add one more block comment for the counter. And we'll place all the code related to our counter underneath this comment. And I'll save that. And even though this component isn't especially complicated, we're already starting to see the benefit that the composition API gives us in terms of keeping our related logic all together. Instead of scattered out across the various options, which we had to do when we were using the options API. If you want to grab the full course, jump to dannys.link slash composition API and the link is in the description. Or we've still got four more videos to go in this YouTube series. Make sure you click subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any of them. And you can find a link to the whole playlist in the description.